First penalty will be taken by the vastly experienced Lee Martin up against Balcom here. Taking a short run up for this one. Martin delays it a tad. Goes for the penalty and skies it over the bar and over the stand into the car park. That one was always rising. He had a little stutter in his run up and I think he just got right underneath it and leant back. And, uh, he hasn't only cleared the crossbar, he's cleared the ground. and A poor penalty from the skipper and now it's, uh, now it's the turn for Bromley skipper. Well, that's uh, two penalty shootouts in a row where it's been struck over the bar by an opposition player. And um, he hit it with power, didn't he? But far too much power and not enough direction. Jack Corley, the goal scorer for Bromley tonight, will be first up for the Ravens as Aji Ajibola blows his whistle. Corley with a slightly longer run up, goes left footed and finds the back of the net. Hey, didn't really move very much. That's a confident penalty from Jack Corley who finds the net for the second time this evening. Yeah, brilliant penalty to his keeper's right. I think Haig wanted to stay where he was, thought Corley might go down the middle, just waited for, for where Corley was going to put it, and a, a really strong penalty. Strong penalty indeed, Dan. And next up, it's uh, former Bromley man Adam Meckey, who will have memories of scoring at the north end of the ground here at Hayes Lane for Bromley. Here he steps up for Fleet United. Meckey looks like it's going to be right-footed. Another stutter, and he finds the bottom corner. Well-struck penalty there from Meckey, sending back on the wrong way. And uh, not many cheers there. No, I did actually see one Ipswich fan. There was only one person by the car park end as I was making my way around after half time. I did see one. But yeah, like you say, not too many cheers. I think the majority are probably fans tonight. A good 99% of them. Score. Currently one apiece here. Palace Francis will look to make it 2 1 to Bromley in this penalty shootout as he steps up against Chris Haig. Here is Francis. Again, stutters and it's saved by Haig. The second penalty to be missed this evening. But this one is saved by the goalkeeper. And both penalties that were missed have had stutters in the run-up. Yeah, they have. I'm not a fan of it personally. Just go and hit the ball, put your foot through it and put it in the corner. No need for the stutters. And uh, next up for Ebsfleet is Paxman, who's uh, played the whole 90 minutes tonight. And uh, I'm not... Uh, quite sure what's going on oh it's been taken again and uh, I'm not sure why maybe the goalkeeper was off his line Dan did you see anything I didn't know obviously the stutter that Palace did might have caused the keeper to come off his line but second time lucky hopefully uh, Palace Francis having an opportunity here to go again I'm not sure what the issue was and why it needs to be retaken uh, we're seeing that Haig was off his line at the time of taking and uh, Palace Francis with a second chance here to score. And he does score this time, sends Chris Haig the wrong way. And it is 2-1 to Bromley in interesting circumstances. Yeah, he's uh, second time lucky. He's, he's done the stutter again, but he said it came the wrong way. I think Haig thought he might go the same way. And the Ebsfleet management staff aren't not too happy about that decision. I'm not, not too sure I didn't see Haig go off his line, but line, the linesman's got a better view than we have up here. He does, and he's much closer. He's not on his, uh, his touch line. He's uh, much closer. Uh, Chris Haig being told to stay away by the referee and uh, it will be Paxman now stepping up he thought he was going to step up a moment ago he is now against Balcom here is Jack Paxman left footed finds the bottom corner and sends Balcom the wrong way and up next for Bromley is Marcus Sablet and uh, as Chris Haig walks towards the goal gets the uh, wolf whistles from the Bromley fans behind it doing their best to put him off Marcus Sabley getting some cries of support there. And uh, Haig still remonstrating with Aji Ajibola here about the decision to force the retake there in Palace Francis's penalty. It's currently two apiece here in the penalty shootout. Marcus Sabley looks to make it 3 2 to Bromley as he steps up and hits the post. It was a well taken penalty, had the required amount of power, sent Haig the wrong way, but he hits the post. It's a good, good penalty. And, uh, unfortunately for Marcus, he's hit the post. Yeah, not too much you could criticise Marcus Sablier for there. He's clearly disappointed, but had that been a couple of inches more to the left, you'd be saying that's the best penalty of the night. And uh, the second half substitutes here, Ashley Nathaniel George, played all 45 minutes of the second period, will step up against Balcom. Here he is, Nathaniel George versus Balcom. 
Slow run up there, and it's uh, into the bottom corner again. I think Balcom may have got the slightest of touches there. Yeah, great penalty, slow stutter, right into that side netting, no chance for, for Balcom. Dive the right way, but it's right in the corner. So, 3-2 to Ebsfleet now. And, uh, so, Kader, who's worked very hard up front this evening, will look to make it three apiece. And... Uh, Linesman Jack Fagg has come even closer to keeping on Chris Haig, potentially coming off his line again. It is Kader. It is a powerful penalty. It's touched into the net by Chris Haig. Nerves of steel from Sol Kader. Yeah, good penalty. Got it wide of the keeper. Nice and high as well into the roof of the net. A touch from Chris Haig, just not enough to prevent the goal. And it's uh, Kieran Monlui now for the fleet to try and put his side back in front here. Mon Louis against Balcom. Here he comes, a fairly central run up and a fairly central penalty as he buries it into the middle of the net, sending Balcom to the right. And uh, all fairly simple that. Yeah, just casual penalty down the middle. Didn't try and put too much power on it because sometimes it can hit the keeper's legs as they dive, but composed penalty down the middle. Ben Margotson now on his second Bromley appearance. Both have resulted in penalty shootouts. Both have ended one all. Although he didn't take a penalty in the previous one away to Tunbridge, he will be taking one now. As it's 4-3 to Epsley at the moment. Ben Margotson needs to score this one really. As he steps up, referee blows the whistle. Margotson finds the bottom corner. That is a very well placed penalty from the Welshman. Brilliant penalty, you can hear the noise right in that pocket, right in that stanchion of the goal. And uh, sudden death now, one miss each for both sides. And uh, Epsley will argue it was two misses for Bromley, but uh, we can see actually, we've, uh, we've seen the footage up here, thanks to the analyst Ronan, and uh, we can see that Haig is off his line. It's a fair decision really from Jack Fagg and Gio Bola, and it's uh, Sefa Karaman now, the German player who's been all over the pitch tonight to take this crucial penalty for Ebsfleet and he steps up looks like a left-footed effort saved by Balcom and Bromley thought they had the win and uh, I think it's being ordered to be retaken how bizarre yeah another one both both saves that keepers have made have both had to be retaken Ebsfleet looking to go in front had victory there and the players were just celebrating and it's very very tight call we're just seeing it again up here Caraman stepping up again and he scores this time buries it to Balcom's right and Balcom dive left but uh, looking at the replays that one was a lot closer than the one Haig was pulled up for yeah it was and, and Callum Fisher needs to score here to make it 5-5 hoping he can stay composed it's like you say Danny has to score a bit of pressure here for Keller Fisher and uh, you can see the referee and uh, assistant are very very hot on the keeper staying on their line and uh, Fisher up against Chris Haig here a vital penalty for Bromley the referee blows the whistle here comes Kellen Fisher and he scores sends Chris Haig the wrong way a wonderful penalty well struck yeah stay composed good penalty sent the keeper the wrong way not quite in the corner, but a good, good solid penalty. Good, good, got good power on it. Here comes Asilo John Batty. Another vastly experienced player in this absolute United side. Not too sure he'll have taken too many penalties in his career so far. Uh, but you do see some centre-backs and defenders that are seasoned penalty takers. We've seen them in the National League over the years as well. John Batty versus Balcom. Here he is, John Batty with the stutter just at the end of the run-up. Buries it into the back of the net. And here is Rhys Wyborn for Bromley. The left-back tonight, again another player that's played the whole game, 90 minutes. And he will look to pull Bromley back level here. Each of these spot kicks is vital. And uh, I'm sure you know this feeling, Dan. I do, I took a few, uh, few penalties for school football in a few cup competitions. Missed one and scored three. Not a bad record. 
three quarters conversion rate, 75 percent. Not bad. Here is Wyborn then. Stepping up, looking like a left-footed effort here. Amazing run up from Wyborn and finds the back of the net. Really, really well played by Reese Wyborn. I think possibly some words from Chris Haig before that penalty and Wyborn just gives him the little shush there. Yeah, nice to see that youngster. A lot of, uh, lot of confidence to take a penalty like that. Nice and composed, just rolled it past Haig. Opposite corner. And now Michael West. The other half-time substitute, who actually wasn't signalled to come on, we had to work it out ourselves, wearing the 10 shirt tonight up against Balcom, has to score here for Epsley. Up steps West, struck high into the middle of the goal there, and it's a very good penalty. Balcom diving the right way, but just couldn't get his arm up high enough. Yeah, good penalty, and I think it's going to be Balcom to take this next penalty for Bromley. So he was unable to make the save. It was a good, powerful penalty. Right, it's the goalkeeper now ahead of uh, a couple of outfield players. Balcom is going to take this one. Uh, goalkeeper versus goalkeeper. Balcom against Haig. Here is Balcom, and it's saved by Haig. It's a good save down to his right, and. Uh, we're unsure what's uh, happened there as everyone seems to sort of turn around and look at each other, including us. Uh, but of course, that does mean it's a penalty shootout victory for Esfleet United this evening. Uh, but that's uh, not really a reflection on the great performance that the Young Bromley team have put out here tonight. <laughs>